Well, welcome back. How are you feeling? Thank you. Very good. I'm excited. Are you more excited to be kind of fighting more regularly now? I know you've ha you have two back to back wins, but they're a year apart. Yeah. Because I, last year I had five surgeries, as I told the team last time. Now I'm healthy, and, and uh, I just fought recently in September. And uh, Sean Shabby and Ali gave me a great fight and to close the year with a bang. How important is it to be active when you have those win streaks going, especially to keep the momentum going? I think it's very important, but more important is the health. If you are not healthy and you keep fighting like uh, every second month and then not to your full potential, this is not smart. If you're healthy, even if it takes a year, you come back, you're healthy, you train well, I think this is more important than fight, let's say, five times a year, but on half, half capacity. And uh, now I'm healthy, I want to be active, no injuries, I'm going to keep going. When you're going through those times where you are getting your body healthy, what do you do to keep your mind healthy and positive and keep yourself motivated knowing you are going to come back? I just love the sport. I do this, uh, I do this since I'm 13 years old. I know nothing else, you know. Since I'm 13, I'm training every day, twice a day. Uh, this is my life. This is how I, I grew up in the UFC. I'm in the UFC. This is my sixth year now. I signed with the UFC when I was still a kid. I grew up in that octagon, and this is what I love. This is my biggest love, my biggest passion, and this keeps me motivated. What do you think of your opponent? I think Jamie's a good fighter. His nickname is Hooligan, and I'm excited for a big, big fight on Saturday. I am coming for violence. This I guarantee. What are you expecting from him? It sounds like you know, you're expecting violence, but do you expect a, a three-round war with him, or do you feel like you'll have one really good round and then get to finish maybe in the second? What's, what's your thoughts on how the fight will go? I don't like to predict fights because a fight is a fight. It's always 50-50. You fight a guy who he's here. You have also this is 10th UFC fight, so maybe he's going to be different. From his last recent fights, we saw he's a little bit gun shy. This I can. He got dropped uh, from Agdesi. He got dropped before. And he's in the beginning of his UFC career. He was more kind of crazy. He fought like, like really like the hooligan. Now he became a little bit gun shy. This is what I see. He may be going to try to wrestle me. If he, even if he's trying to wrestle me, I'm going to be. I'm well prepared for everything, and I'm excited for 15 minutes of violence. Um, you mentioned McDessie, and you know, he fought him recently. Was there anything that you watched in that fight, having already fought McDessie yourself, that you were able to kind of carry maybe into this fight? No, McDessie is a very, uh, he's a unique fighter. He has uh, his own style, like Taekwondo, Karate. If you, if you don't know how to fight this, this kind of style, it makes the fight a little bit like boring or tricky. And we saw that McDessie did a great job. In my opinion, McDessie won that fight. And they robbed him big time, very unfortunately, but it's okay, this is the game, you know. And uh, I was not impressed with either or uh, Magdesi or M Mulaki's performance, but Mulaki is a great fighter. He had great fights, he fought some good guys, he fought Jalen Turner, Brad Riddell, he fought, he, he had some good f names on his resume, and uh, I don't underestimate him, but I'm very, very self confident for a good fight. Was there any disappointment that the fight was here in Vegas versus China, or do you prefer to be fighting here than in China? Actually, I was excited to fight in Shanghai. Um, I got my visa, I was excited to travel there, and uh, short notice, they called me, hey, your fight got moved. It is what it is. This is my third fight in the Apex. I love also to fight in the Apex, because this is kind of like sparring feeling. And uh, I like in front of a big crowd in a different city, or here, for me, it doesn't matter, because the fight, I'm locked with the guy in the cage, doesn't matter where. Thank you. You were, you were scheduled to fight him earlier, and then that fight didn't happen. Granted, it wasn't that long ago. But So did you already feel that the game plan was already laid out then? Or did you, have to, did you see anything in his recent fights that you had to change up anything for this particular fight? Actually, of course, we watched some tape. In the beginning of the year, I was supposed to fight him in Australia. But then I needed hand surgery. So we didn't even really start the training camp because I was injured. And... Uh, he has some, he have, he have some habits, of course, we study his habits, we, we prepare for his habits, but the fight is a fight. Maybe on Saturday he's going to come in, he's going to be, he's going to have a different game plan, he's going to be a bit different approach, we never know. So, of course, we prepare for the worst, but I, mostly I'm, I prepare for my, on my own strength, from where I'm good at, I'm preparing for, and I'm going to put my game plan on him. And just to, I, I wasn't aware, so you said you, you had a hand surgery that you had to come back from? How are your hands now? 
Oh, they are very, very good. I had a hand surgery with the best doctor surgeon in the world, Dr. Shen, Los Angeles. He took great care. And uh, after this, I just fought in September. They feel amazing, no injuries anymore. Alhamdulillah, and uh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm healthy, ready to throw some hands. That's awesome. You know, and I was asking your opponent his thoughts on, give me your thoughts on the overall division, the strength of, of the lightweight division. How, how strong do you feel that the overall division is at the top? Oh, the lightweight division is the, the hardest division, of course. Look at the top 20, top 30. Everybody's good, you know. Then you see flyweight, bantamweight. Or some divisions you think like top 15 guys, they just put them in because there are no other fighters. But the lightweight division is the deepest division and the competition is very high. For example, my last three guys I lost to, they're all today in the top 15. Bob, Bobby Green, Dan Hooker, or Drew Dober. And uh, the quality of uh, fighters in this division is very, very big. It's, it's a hard division for sure. And I know a lot of people, everybody's calling for Islam. Everybody wants to be next. You know, you got Gagey over there asking for it. Recently, Armin Sarukin was asking for it. Of course, Dana says he thinks that Oliveira should be the one to get that fight back. Who do you think should get the shot next? I think Oliveira, maybe Gagey. Uh, Dustin Poirier had so many tire shots, even Justin Gagey. But I think from the, from the name and from the potential to make it a big fight is Charles Oliveira versus Islam. And then one last one for this particular fight. What do you need to do to make sure that your arms get raised on Saturday? What are your keys to the victory? Just being my best, you know. The, the fight is so, men so much mentally because you, you prepare months, 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 and then you need, just need to, um, you need to work this 50 minutes. You need to be sharp. You might need to be uh, focused. And every, all your skills, you, you need to be ready to, to, to bring them during the fight, not you train one year, let's say the best skills in the fight you go. So, so many people, they have mental like issues, they go into the fight, they are not the same. And I am very confident in bringing my best performance on Saturday and I know that I'm better everywhere, but I'm looking forward for a good striking battle if he wants to. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you.